everybody welcome back for another vlog okay so as you know girl world has kind of been on strike recently i'm not exactly sure why we're on strike or why we're refusing to upload or what has warranted this three week break well let's be real this two year break but we haven't been uploading which means no content which means nothing to talk about right wrong there's always something for us to talk about and today i think that we're going to talk about a potential q a that we might be seeing from our girl now normally at this point during Amber Lynn's uh, little hiatus, you would normally see something pop up on her Instagram story, ask me anything, but today she decided to go on her YouTube community tab and reach out to her audience that she has a great relationship with. So she asked everybody, hey, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. So we're going to take a look at what some of the community is asking Amber Lynn and what we think uh, would be her response or if you think that she would be likely to answer such a question. All right. So some people were saying that this is the community working for her. I, I, the, the community is providing work for her to do. And I, I, I kind of see that. I mean, if you're a content creator, if you're a vlogger, uh, part of your job is to come up with content. You're creating it after all, right? Hence, content creator. <laughs> see, see how that works. But um, Amber Lynn likes to come on here and on Instagram story and, you know, hey, could you could you kind of point me in the right direction? Can you kind of do this for me? Can you kind of work for me? Can, can you kind of, I don't know, provide the questions for me? Because if I'm going to film a video of me reading out your question and then providing an answer, half of the footage would be me reading the questions. So you're doing 50% of the work for me right? Uh, oh, I kind of like the sound of that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, fire up your questions. Um, we see Amber Lynn do this time and time again, as recently as the whole popsicle stick thing, which by the way, we never finished. So if you're not familiar with the popsicle stick thing, Amber Lynn got a bunch of popsicles and wrote numbers on them. And then those numbers corresponded with a question that she wrote on a piece of notebook paper. And she maybe did, oh, I don't know. 10 to 15 of the 50 popsicle sticks that she had. So I'm not really sure what became of all of the other popsicle sticks and those questions and everything. Maybe they just got thrown out the wind or in the recycle bin or whatever. But um, Amber Lynn is saying she needs new questions. She needs something fresh. So uh, the community is going to foster up something fresh for her. Uh, to kind of guide her in the right direction. So maybe this will finally be what gets us vlogging again. Uh, kind of entered a little bit of a slump situation type deal the past two weeks, and maybe this will be what gets her out of it. So let's hop in. Um, first up, well, Amber Lynn, you can just check the other 15 community posts where you've asked people questions before and then you've never answered them. Or the one in the yep the popsicle list which you didn't finish yet. This is this is why are you coming to the community? Why are you coming to your audience asking for more questions when there are all these other questions that you still need to answer and take a look at? Why do you need more engagement from us? Can't you go back? I mean, really, you have all these toys to play with, Amber Lynn. Why are we going to Walmart and buying more toys? You have all of these toys to play with. Look at all these toys to play with. But you want to go to Walmart and you want to go buy new toys. I think that you should just play with the toys that you already have. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's going to happen. But To what extent do you think the United States and its... Na oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, uh, that, that's cute. That's funny. Do you ever get bored of cherry picking the same question? Yeah. And then when she does do these Q and A's, I do notice when she does ask people, Hey, ask me questions. It's only the ones 
that she likes or the ones that she would feel comfortable asking. We would never get an uncomfortable question answered in a Q&A like this. I'm sure that we will eventually run into some uncomfortable questions on here, which I can maybe, you know, provide some commentary on, but it's something that Amber Lynn would never answer, especially now, um, more now than ever. Throughout her YouTube career, she has become, in my opinion, the most distant with her audience that she's ever been, not forthcoming whatsoever. And then what she is forthcoming with, it's either a lie or it's misleading. Um, you know, when she told us that she ended her relationship two years ago, that ended up being a lie. And she stayed with that girl for another year and a half. So when Amber Lynn is forthcoming with information that the audience is interested in hearing about, it, it's usually something that is half the truth or none at all. I honestly don't have any questions. You've motivated me and my family. Um, you've motivated myself and my family to take the next step in our health journey. I hope you realize that life is short and health is more important than trolling. Burn. T. That's T right there. Uh, I know that a lot of people watch Amber Lind and then they feel motivated about it. I think that she has commented on this in the past before. It was kind of, um, I'm not sure exactly the word that she used, but it was kind of um, sad. It, it was kind of like, not a wake up call, because I don't know if anything could be a wake up call at this point. I mean, we could walk up to her with symbols next to her ears and, you know, clash them together. I don't think it would do anything. So I'm not sure if a wake up call is in the cards here. However, um, it seems to be a wake up call for other people. A lot of people see lifestyles that are very different or exaggerated than their own. And they think, oh my, oh, this, this is what it could be, you know, on, on one end of the spectrum, you know, really good lifestyle, really bad lifestyle. It's like, well, you know, I'm not at the really good mark, but I'm not at the really bad mark either. But if I start going in the direction of the really bad, this is, this is, you know, what awaits. And I, I don't want to get to that. So I, I'm going to hightail it into the better direction. I, I know that a lot of people do that. Some people watch Amber Lynn while they're at the gym. Some people watch Amber Lynn while they're cooking. It's just, I don't know. It serves as a reminder, I suppose, to some people. I have seen this be said in the community before. Girl, how many more questions could we ask? Literally had a whole list of popsicle sticks you never got to. I am saying the same thing, Kylie. I'm saying the same thing. Where I don't know. You know what, though? The popsicle sticks may have already been packed. The movers. We could blame the movers on this. Well, I can't be doing those popsicle sticks anymore because I packed those already. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where they went. They're in storage. They're around here somewhere. I need new. New, new, new. I need new questions. Come on, Kylie. Do you ever feel you rely too much on your audience for content, the persistent Q&As, the continual addressing of rumors and assumptions in your very short vlogs? If you were to cut that out, how? I'm zoomed in too far. How much original content would you be left with? Um, well, Zoe Wolfchild, I mean, we have seen what the original content is. Kind of going back to the beginning of the vlog and everything, you know, being a content creator, you are creating content. And when you ask certain people to come up with something, you know, put them on the spot. Well, not really on the spot when they have time to rehearse and edit and everything. I don't know why I said that. When you give someone a task and say, okay, I need you to be entertaining. I need you to do something. I need you to say something. I need you to film something. I need you to put something into a form of media that we can put onto YouTube and it will entertain the hundreds of thousands of people that are subscribed to you. Can you do that? This is the result of someone that has gained their platform and their following largely based on other people. Amber Lynn is very reliant on the community, very reliant on reaction channels, Reddit, Kiwi Farms, websites very similar to that. If people are not saying things, if people are not asking questions, if people are not making videos about Amber Lynn, she really doesn't have anything to go off of. Um, at this point, and really what we've seen in the past couple years and everything is a lot of um, 
uh, redundancy. I, I, that might be a good word for it. I, I think that some people watch a lot of reaction videos or watch her content and just kind of think, well, you know, this isn't very fun. This isn't very entertaining. This is kind of silly. This doesn't really seem like it has a point to it. And you could be right, you could be right, but for everyone that's left over that does for some reason still find this entertaining, <laughs> I'm one of them. Uh, you know, it's just kind of um, the way it's always been. I don't think that if Amber Lynn were to have just had a YouTube career where it was just her putting out content on her own without the community's involvement backing her or following her or interacting with her, she wouldn't have gained the following that she did or the amount of subscribers that she did. I, I mean, think about it. Who, who really wants to watch Amber Lynn clean her kitchen or organize the cabinets or uh, open up something from Amazon. If this was not Goral World and there was not a community and there were not people, you know, invested in her life for some kind of arbitrary reasoning, no one would be watching Amber Lynn Reed unironically open packages from Amazon or pour soap from one container into another. Her vlogs would get under a thousand views, um, but that's not what it is. Uh, you know, it's it's largely determined and shaped around people's involvement and engagement. So when Amber Lynn really doesn't give us much to work with, and we have to kind of you know make something out of nothing, which has really been the last couple years throughout season five, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of um, not a balanced relationship. It becomes more uh, not as fun, not as fun. So Amber Lynn, Amber Lynn has to work with the community if she expects the community to work with her. I think that the community is very imbalanced right now. The community is doing a lot of the work. We are quite literally working for this woman. I mean, at this point, I think that someone else should be running the channel. I, I <laughs> oh my. All right. Um, here's a hypothetical for you. If you were suddenly forced into a world war and had to go back to food rationing, how would you cope? <laughs> Does it matter? Uh, we've gone through this over and over and over and over, and you never answer any of the questions people really want to know. This is just an opportunity for you to get attention and have it be all about you, just like a true narcissist. Ooh, 181 people liked that. Interesting. Very interesting. Do you think that Amber Lynn asking for Q&A questions is just her attempt or opportunity to try to be relevant in a very low effort kind of way? It's like, hey, hey, guys, new community tab. Go ahead and ask me questions. Spark up debate. D do it in the comments for me. I mean, I'm not going to answer any of them, but at least it gets you guys talking. It gets the wheels rolling. Mm. Mm. Uh, how many more times can we ask you the same things? The Q&As are the worst. Uh, the Q&As are pretty bad. I will say um, the Q&As are bad, but I don't think they're the worst. There was another segment that Amber Lynn did very briefly. I only think it was in one vlog where she had people send in voice memos and she responded to cherry picked voice memos at the end of her vlog. That, in my opinion, was the worst, but the Q&As are definitely up there. Uh, I can't wait to hear you answer more questions about yourself that you've already answered a hundred times. Are you guys kind of getting Groundhog Day vibes? Do you think, do, do you oftentimes sit down to another Reaction Channel episode or another episode from our girl and think, you know what? We've talked about this before. She has said this exact thing before. I have heard her answer this just a couple weeks ago, and here we are talking about it again. Why, why is that? <laughs> Do you think that some of the content gets recycled in Girl World? I don't know. That's never really struck me. I guess I would really have to think about that. Huh. I don't know. How, 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 would you ever think that someone would describe Amber Lynn's lifestyle or what she does here on YouTube as a cycle? Kind of, 
you know, going through the same motions again and again. Do, do, do you think that that would be characteristic of her? I, I got to think about that one. Do a Q&A on a live stream with people face-to-face, -face, unfiltered, answering real questions that we want to know. Um, that would never happen. That would never happen. Um, Amber Lynn is barely able to do a live stream on her own with people not face-to-face -to, -face to her. So to add in that extra variable into it, I, I don't think that that's something that she would be able to handle. Amber, Amber Lynn has told us in the past that they're very anxiety provoking for her. We saw that in the last one. There were a lot of moments when she was live streaming where she said, <sighs> you know, we got kind of that deep breath moment. And then she kind of told us, well, I'm having some anxiety right now. So they're very nerve wracking for her. And um, in my opinion, the only reason why we ever saw the live stream era from her is because she had Becky do a majority of the work. I mean, if you go back and watch those live streams that she did with Becky, um, the ones that included Becky were infinitely more entertaining than the ones where it was just Amber Lynn on the couch. However, Becky did most of the talking. She did most of the reading. She did most of the interacting. Um, most of the time when Amber Lynn would chime in to provide commentary or some type of answer to something on live stream, it was usually to piggyback off of what Becky said or to put in a, a little terse comment. So I don't think that Amber Lynn is a live streamer. Uh, I mean, she's kind of told us this before. It gives her too much anxiety. It's something she's not good at. And, you know, a lot of times on live stream, when you say it, it's there forever. And, um, you know, you can't be going into iMovie later and editing that out. No one will have been able to see it or hear it ever again. On live stream, you don't really have time to think about what you're going to say. Or, ooh, did I say that correctly? Did I say that that the nicest way? Did I say that in a way that really would come across the best way? You can't do that. You can't do it. Whatever you say, it's it's right then and there. And, and usually that's the most raw, authentic version you get of someone when they're not going back and editing and, you know, making sure everything sounds perfect. I mean, you go and talk with anybody in, in, in real life. I mean, no one ever says the right thing 100% of the time. So what do you think your viewers want to know? You keep posting these community posts asking for questions for Q&As, but how many of those can you really film and where do the popsicle sticks go? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess if Amber Lynn just really feels that she does not have any content, I, I'm talking any kind of content right now, this is the best she's got. She can always fall back on the Q&As. Typically, this is done on Instagram. However, when she... When she does those Q&As on Instagram, it gives the reaction channels an opportunity to go through them and, you know, talk about them and everything, but it doesn't necessarily make her money. It moves the wheels. It fosters up some type of engagement in girl world. It gets people thinking about and talking about Amber Lynn, but it doesn't directly make her money. So I think if she were to put this on here, get her YouTube audience kind of thinking and talking about her again, and then she were to come on with a video, it would get a little bit more buzz than had she just done everything on Instagram, maybe make her a little bit more money. I don't know, just a thought. Uh, when Zachary Michael said you do so, uh, such low effort content, he was right. We don't care about your favorite movie anymore. You won't even answer the real question. So this is all pointless. You rely so much on your audience for your content. I guess that we employ you. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So are we Amber Lynn's boss? Oh, I never thought of it that way. We employ Amber Lynn because Without an audience, without reaction channels, without subreddits, without the forums, sub 1,000 views. I, I mean, wh who's going to look at the popsicle sticks unironically? Who is going to look at putting soap from one bottle of plastic into another? Nobody. Nobody's going to watch that kind of content. Uh, how does a 700 calorie smoothie fit into your OMAD diet? <laughs> I was kind of
kind of wondering that too. I mean, when she was doing one meal a day, that quite literally means one meal a day. It's one opportunity for you to consume calories a day, right? Um, I don't remember OMAD being, well, yeah, you can have this this meal and then you can go have a you know big frappe from Starbucks too. Uh, but maybe OMAD means something different to Amberlynn. We have talked about the different bracketing between intermittent fasting schedules. If you are fasting for 20 hours a day, there is that four-hour window every day that you can eat and consume calories. So maybe Amberlynn eats a meal, and then she goes and gets Starbucks. And so as long as it is in that four-hour bracket of time, it's okay. But that necessarily wouldn't be OMAD then. It would be some type of intermittent fasting. So we would have to call it something different at that point. But she was the one that brought this to the table. She was the one that said OMAD. So I think that this person's question is very fair because it is a term that Amberlynn has used recently. Which was worse, choking on a lifesaver or a potato? I would imagine the potato because the potato is bigger, right? That would probably be more terrifying. So, ooh, okay. So a lot of people are saying kind of the same thing to her. This has really been, just been a clapback moment for a lot of people saying, hey, you got the popsicles. You've asked for Q&As on Instagram. You've done this so many times. And you know what this is really starting to feel like? You ever have that friend that doesn't take any of your advice? but still complains about their life to you, or they complain about, I, I don't know, a, a partner of theirs, a, a crappy boyfriend, someone that doesn't treat them the way that they should be treated. And the uh, the answer is very obvious to them. It's like, okay, well, this, uh, look at me, look at me. This is what you should do. Once you do this, your life will get better. When you make this decision, when you take my advice right now and apply this to your life, your life will get better. You will achieve the results that you are crying to me and that you are coming to me saying that you want. You ever have one of those friends before? You, you give them all the right answers. You, you bestow such good wisdom onto them, but then they, they go and you know do what they want to do. They go and continue to make their bad decisions. They, really, and honestly, at some point, it starts to become a slap in the face. Why should I take the time to be giving you answers and advice and listening to everything that you have to cry about if you're just going to go ahead and do what you want to do anyway? Hmm? Why should you, Amber Lynn, be coming and ask for more questions like this if you're not going to answer them? Just again and again, continue to do this for me so that I cannot fulfill what I am asking of you. I I'm not going to do what you say, but I still want you to do it. <laughs> it's a little bit disrespectful. And for someone that already has a strained relationship with her audience, I don't think that this is very appropriate. If you're not going to follow through with what you are trying to engage in with the people that watch you and really pay your bills, as that other person put, employ you, if you're not going to follow through with the engagement of you know what you say that you're going to work with, with the people that you make videos for, why ask this of them if you're not going to go through with it? I, I I don't get it. It is. It's a little bit disrespectful to leave your you know your audience kind of like hanging. I guess. Ugh. How could you have really loved Feline if you were able to move on so fast? Hmm. Hmm. Um. Maybe it was. Well, I guess if I were to answer it from her perspective, maybe it was the whole rebound thing, and you know maybe it really wasn't love at all. The re really the only person that Amber Lynn loves, a lot of people think, is herself. You know if. She, if you are truly, if you truly believe that Amber Lynn Reed is a narcissist and she is the only person that she loves, the side characters, the girlfriends, the whatever, those are just fluff. 
Those are just people that can drive her around, take her to doctor's appointments, keep her company, go and get the DoorDash delivery from the front lobby. They're just an accessory. They are an accessory to Amber Lynn Reed as a person. So if you're able to move on that fast and you really didn't really care about that person, it was more so just about what they could do for you. Probably just falling into the realm of, well, I need to meet someone new. I don't necessarily have to, you know, fall, be in love with them. I just need them to fulfill a purpose, which is what a lot of people think. Uh, don't even ask anything, you guys. She never acknowledges any of these questions, and she has 600 popsicle sticks to read. That's a very peculiar number to use. Uh, don't do her job for her. Hmm. A lot of people are agreeing with this. I'm seeing this again and again. How'd Feline react to you meeting someone new so quickly? Hmm. I don't think that she would answer that. Uh, she, you know what she would say? Well, I don't want to speak for her. I don't want to put words in her mouth. I don't want to say how someone else feels. That's how she'd be able to get out of it. Please don't do this. Film anything else. Yeah, I, anything, anything is better than a QA. and a uh, something, something more than a Q&A or an unboxing or a try-on. Actually, you know what? We could do a try-on. We haven't seen a try-on in a long time. Um, try-ons aren't very interesting, but, you know, it, at least it would jazz it up a little bit, spice it up a little bit. I know that that's kind of pathetic for me to say. A, a try-on video at this point would be spicing it up. That's a little spooky, but... You know, we haven't really seen a try on in, uh, yeah, like Christmas ish. With you packing up to move and sorting through the amount of stuff you have, do you think that this has opened your eyes into how much stuff you buy and you don't use? And do you think that this will change the way you purchase items in the future? Ooh. I think that that's a very fair question. I think that that's a very good question. I don't think that Amber, I, I, I think that that's a very reasonable question to ask Amber Lynn. And I think if she were to think that, you know, of her audience to be reasonable as well, she should answer this. I think out of everything that has been asked so far, I think that this is something that she should answer out of everything else. Um, I'd like to know how you aren't fired yet with all these no call, no shows. Girl, you have to show up for work. Shelby has a point. Shelby definitely has a point. Are you going to be honest about the timeline surrounding WLS? If you and Feline hadn't broken up yet, why wouldn't you have gone through with it? I know. If, if you canceled the WLS because you thought that you wouldn't have support, but you guys didn't break up for a couple months after... Was was that really the reason all along? Did you did you think that you were kind of heading that way? Did you think that you were foreseeing a breakup? Because Amber Lynn told us that this kind of hit her right in the face. It, it was nothing that was really, oh, it's time. You know how some people can like, like you're broken up a long time before you actually formally break up. The love kind of fades. That wasn't the case for Amber Lynn. Amber Lynn said in this most recent relationship, this was the most abrupt stop of a relationship that she has ever had among any of her ex girlfriends. So I think that that's a very fair question too. But we know that Amber Lynn likes to play around with timelines. She, we know that she likes to tell fibs. So I don't think that we would get a straightforward answer to this because we have already received information regarding this concept that was not forthcoming or truthful at all. Why don't you encourage your so-called fans to send money to homeless kids instead of filling your pockets? Tell them to send gifts for Christmas to kids who won't get gifts instead of you. The gifts uh, send just end up in goodwill. It's a good point. I don't know. Has Amber Lynn really done anything like that before? On her channel? I mean, I know that, like, some of the reaction channels have, but I'm just thinking, like, of the two girls, like, Chantal and Amber Lynn, have, have they ever done, like, a, a a giving back kind of thing? I I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Why does it matter when you only answer what your favorite movie is or where you want to travel to? <laughs> Amber Lynn, what's your favorite movie? <gasps> My favorite movie is A Simple Favor. We have. We have heard that a dozen times. Why can't you be alone? Why haven't you taken the step to be more independent so you don't have to constantly seek out relationships? Because it's easier. Because it's easier and it's more comfortable for her. It's, it goes along with the driving thing. Why would I go and get a driver's license if someone else can drive me around? Why put myself through that fear and anxiety of getting behind the wheel like this if I can just sit in the passenger seat and someone else can have that responsibility? It, it, it kind of goes in a lot of things for Amber Lynn's life. Why would I do this? Why would I waste my time and effort doing this if someone can do it for me? <laughs> Why move if someone can move for you? It, it, it pretty much all comes down to that. So I guess maybe all this trickles down to the concept of laziness. Um, have you ever tried publishing Rain and Petals Ease Drop? It's such a good poem. It needs to be in an anthology of modern poetry. Uh, can you admit when you're wrong and apologize? What influences you to be the way you are? How do you truly feel about yourself? How might you be contributing to your problems? Do you, oh, wow, we got a lot from this person. Um, do you genuinely care about others? Are you capable of empathy? A lot of great questions. A lot of very fair, reasonable questions, in my opinion here. How do you define a life well lived? That's a very good one. That is a very good one, and that is something I have touched on in the past. You know, Amber Lynn constantly wants to change her life, right? Throughout all of YouTube, she's always been telling us, I want to change my life. I want to start walking more. I want to lose the weight. I want to be... But Why? Why do you want to do that? What do you define as your ideal life that you would like to be living? Because to me, it seems like Amber Lynn is very satisfied and very content with living inside of her luxury apartment and having everything brought to her. Do you want to lose the weight so that you can find another form of a job? Do you want to lose the weight so that you can travel? If you do want to travel, where do you want to go? What would you like to do when you travel? What are things that you would like to do? You know, what's what's on your bucket list, Amberlynn? You know, we're always just kind of hearing about the symptoms, not the main diagnosis. I would like to lose weight. I would like to change my life. Well, okay, why? And if you don't know why, maybe that's where you should start. And maybe that's where you should be getting your motivation from. Because she has told us in the past, I want to lose weight so that I can be in a relationship with the, the most recent ex-girlfriend. It's the love of her life, the other half of her heart. But we saw that that wasn't the case. It was more so Amber Lynn chose the lifestyle that she likes to have than living a life with the girlfriend. There are, th I, she even said it in the video the other day. I can't just hop on a plane right now and go somewhere. I can't just get in a car and do stuff. I can't just, so, is that what you'd like to get to? Get to a point where you can just hop on a plane? Is that really what you want? Or do you really want to just be a couch cushion hermit person? <laughs> Mojo Dojo Casa, Casa House. Do you want to be a couch hermit person, basically? I, I, I mean, hey, some people do. Some people do. Some people want to just never go outside and do, do anything and never travel. Uh, so I think that that might be a good one to end it on. Hmm. How do you define a life well lived, Amber Lynn? Well, if, if you did have everything... If you had everything you wanted, if you had the body you wanted, if you had uh, the relationship that you wanted, if you had the people in your life that you wanted to be in your life, if you had everything, what would that look like? What, what's missing right now? What, what does that void look like for you? And whatever we're trying to fill the void with right now clearly isn't working. But what would, what would successfully fill that void?
Interesting. I don't know. Let me know what you all thought about this or if you have any other sort of questions that you would like to ask our girl that you probably don't think would get answered by her. Um, We can chat about it in the comments and everything. But, um, yeah. The hiatus continues, y'all, but we're going to see it through. Girl world, the show must go on. See you soon.